did you start kiting just like a year ago just before just when you, you joined us yeah I started kiting in September 2018 18 yeah so what oh it was 2019 no, no 2000 did, did, did you kite before you joined um, our team for foiling no okay so <laughs> once no once I tried uh, like I guess it was in 2015 or something like this or even mm -hmm. earlier for one week and the conditions were super bad okay so everyone was telling me like oh kite is so easy and uh, you can learn it in one week mm -hmm. and I came back home uh, without knowing how to kite okay and I told to myself no kite just windsurfing okay and, only <laughs> and so and then in 2019 I think it was um, October November let me just move a bit because the because the sun so you joined us yes in um 20 i think 2019 october no it was 2018 because now it's 2020. oh yeah so yeah 2018 you yes. joined us the first time in october um you tried kite and it's practically it's practically has been i think one and a half years since you've been kiting and foiling exactly <laughs> so um tell actually foiling i started only in february in february yes 2019 19 okay uh, so I, I guess you tried like 20 and then it's used to foil how do you end up like uh, I know like I know how we chose you but basically um, why 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 you wanted to to be in the team and maybe like go for Olympics and just do all this folding stuff so I always like sport mm -hmm. I like different kinds summer sport winter sport okay. and was always active and um, uh, was doing windsurfing uh, mm -hmm. with my parents usually only on vacations and uh, then you guys, uh, your team started searching for girls. Yes. And uh, I spoke with uh, Alexei and uh, he told me like, hey, there is uh, this opportunity. We are ready to uh, teach someone completely from the beginning. And uh, uh, as I was uh, quite in shape and uh, in the sportive mood, uh -huh. um, I guess oh. that's why you came to me. Uh, I I thought like I don't know, it was less than uh, one month for sure. I decided in a few weeks that I really want to try this mm -hmm. because if I if I had told uh, no, I would regret for all my life, especially when the Olympic uh, uh, would be on the TV. And uh -huh. I would be like very sad, like fuck, I could be there, but I'm okay. not. So, I so it's, you, you basically decided to give it a go and try it and see yeah. how it's going to work out. Yeah, I everything in Russia. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you told me, it's, it's, it's a funny story, I think you told me a couple of times that you basically just got the job yeah, actually, in, the, in the major company yeah. and you what, you've done like the, the trial period and then you quit. I was, I was afraid because uh, when Alexei mm -hmm. came to me, it was my first month uh, okay. in the job. And in <laughs> Russia, it's like uh, three months you should work and then they can take you for permanent. Okay. And I was like, oops, if I t tell them now that uh, I'm not going to work anymore, I need vacations, <laughs> they could just like... Uh, uh, kick me out in uh -huh. one day mm -hmm. so I waited till the end of this period and uh, then spoke like I got this opportunity and I'm still on vacations it's still I'm on vacation still, is, is, yeah is, they're is, still keeping me is, I'm so happy <laughs> is it a paid leave or just like a vacation of course no 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 you, you would first, like it first days were paid mm -hmm. but now of course not <laughs> okay and look it's been um you basically join us for the reason because um, we're gonna have a team relay in Olympic Games and I think many many countries started to get the girls on their teams GB UK um, Tony with his sister Martin we you Valeria um, the it Italian girls all over the world basically mm -hmm. and I think you kind of you got into this first wave of, of new riders um, to join the sport as a formula kite but at the same time, like Valeria, for example, she's been kiting before, but for you, it's completely new experience. And you, as, as you said, you started like in October with a twin tip and then a couple of months kiting and twin tip, but then in February you started with the, with the foil. So how do you feel the experience and the progress overall this past couple of years, year and a half has been? 
Um, just Honestly, how, how do you feel it? How do you feel like it transitioned? How do you feel compared maybe to other girls and then? Okay, firstly, I will tell okay. that. Honestly, I thought that it would be much faster learning. The learning curve. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but um, like, okay, I already compete in several uh, events. Okay. Which which uh, ones? Which ones did you do? The first one was in Legarda. Okay. Uh, oh, the world championship. Europeans. Oh, world championship. No, it was. It was. It was. It, by the way, it was just exactly almost a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was the first week of May because I remember I finished my my finals like. April 29th, 30th, and I just hop on the plane, flew to Italy, no training, nothing, boom, straight into yeah, the, the world. Yeah, we picked you up in the airport. Yeah. So yeah, it was one year ago, and I didn't know how to do drives okay. and text, nothing. And uh, there I understood like, oh my God, I had to listen to the trainer when he was telling, make everything faster, faster, because the water was so cold. Okay. <laughs> and uh, since then, yeah, I started uh, learning text. And uh, now, not the last one. Okay. Yeah. No, today in the morning we went out and like um, training like at um, 7 a.m. Because that's, that's that's the thing. Like in you know, um, it's a bit easier right now with the coronavirus. After two months of complete lockdown, we finally yeah. got like the last couple of days. We can go down order. Unfortunately, it's only from six six to ten a.m. With very bad conditions. No, no, conditions were great today. Like a fifty minute Levante, we drove to Val de Like risky. No, it was good. And like you, I think the chucks and jabs are on their way better. I think maybe by the beginning of the competing season twenty twenty, which probably gonna be fall. I'm, I'm assuming. Um, probably m m most probably the first events are gonna be end of August September. September, if it's gonna happen because yes. the thing is as far as i know with the regulations in ika already some of the major um, events are confirmed in terms of money mm -hmm. like austria poland probably china closer it may be italy close to the end of the year but the problem is the only one is is the international travel if if the older restrictions are going to be lifted and the athletes from all over the world are going to be able to fly into the country where the competitions are compete then it's going to be fine if not, it's gonna it be, be yeah. If not, it's gonna be a big problem because like if, if people from some parts of Europe or Asia or North or South America cannot fly into like some say, let's say China, there is no way we can yeah, make an international event there. So I think by the end of the year you should have like a pretty um, solid, well, better, better, definitely better um, level. I hope so. Yeah, because uh, in my opinion, I started competing like normally not in the end of the list mm -hmm. mm, here in spain in uh, before the quarantine quarantine yeah quarantine in uh, february i guess we went to local event like a spanish cup i think yeah olympic olympic week in okay. spain and uh, there i was quite satisfied okay it was also it was um, mm, not so like the conditions were tricky okay uh, S some races were without wind and uh, I remember me and uh, another guy from our team, Misha, okay. we decided... Mikhail. Mikhail. It's better, it's, 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 it's a new guy, yeah. no one knows him yet, he's just, he's, I think, what, well, he's 14? Yeah, he's, he's, he, he's, he's 14. He's, he's 14 and he's taller than me and I'm like, damn, like... Yeah, so we can, decided to stay good. on the race where there were almost no wind. Okay. Uh, while like some top guys decided not not to compete, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so happy that we made it. <laughs> oh, you made the race. Well, there was yes. no win. Yeah, it's it's always like um, it's almost like a magic. Like when there's like a basically no win. I call them no win conditions. Yeah. It's like where the half of it is swimming, and like you just need to make those choices. Luck. Like either. <laughs> I, it's not. I don't think it's luck. Like it's definitely luck, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like you, you, you need to be really specific with the choice you make. Because like, if you want to go for a tuck, mm -hmm. you should know if you're gonna be able to make it or not. Because if mm -hmm. in the no wind conditions, if you fail a tuck, like if you touch the water, boom, you're done. You are swimming with the rest, like fleet. I know this. <laughs> yeah, and then, but it's also sad. It, it's 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 also it's it kind of sad. It, it's sad. It's, Satisfactory that when you just finish the race with the four other guys and that's it, and other guys swimming. And then you, but the best thing is like when you make to the beach with this with the with the dry kite. No, to the beach I didn't. Make oh, you didn't it. make it. Yeah. yeah. 
you it's still get nervous, but like, that's bit. the best feeling. Because when you like, when you just yeah. get to the beach with the with the dry cut, and then everyone to the beach is the next level. Yes, yeah, so everyone gets rescued with the boats, and then you just like you pack your cut, and everyone <laughs> has to dry it. And it's just just yeah. feels it's good. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And then like compared to other girls, like you you said you went to a couple events. I know you also in the fall 2019 you went to the couple events thing in Italy. How do you like feel like? compared to, to different girls and maybe like let's say like this you know Gisela trainers with, with us she joined the falling later than you correct mm -hmm. but she she like her level is a bit more um like consistent what what do you think she's better rider than you right now all girls are very strong and uh, uh, really quite uh, strong competitors mm -hmm. with uh, all with good levels and uh, we, most of them are with experience uh, either in uh, racing uh, sailing races or either with a freestyle kite and uh, of course i think it gives a big advantage but so like like experience like overall yeah. like the feel of the kite and everything competing feel of the kite uh, okay yeah knowing all the theory but yeah uh, yeah I guess and what's why, what, what's you doing to combat and to overcome that weakness of not having enough experience? Just uh, train more. Yeah, like <laughs> more yeah, and more. That's that's the thing. Like you showed me your log. Use, use the time. Yeah, you showed me your log. How many days in the water you have been this year? And it's like it's amazing. Like it's even with the quarantine, like it's way more than me. Well, apparently because I had school and some. Yeah, but I yeah. finished everything, so I can spend. Oh yeah, but, all the time. but by the way, how do, you, how do you like my new place? Yeah, it's amazing. See, like the views, nuts, and like uh, we. I you can here. see everyone who is running and uh, playing. Yeah, you can see. I moved. You can here. see police. You I, can see police. Uh, yeah, I, mo I moved here like well, like I think a week ago. <laughs> yeah, the first week of May. I like this place a lot. Fucking like, like it looks amazing. Feel like can look the wind. Just line, yeah, you can see the best, in the morning the best, if it's uh, yeah. windy or not. The best, the best place for breakfast as well. Like you just have the nice, nice yeah. view and <laughs> love it. It's true. Yeah, you're right. And then so this is the thing as well for you. Like you've been living in Spain for the last. Well, how long? All the time when uh, I'm learning kiting. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and then do you, how how do you like cause, cause this thing like you. You had such a big transition living in, in, in Russia, in St. Petersburg, all the way to, to Spain. Yeah, but before I started okay. in Germany, oh, and wow. I had this idea to move somewhere. Did you go to like to university or...? Yeah, I had a double degree program. Do you speak Jornish? No. Sprach in the Deutsch? No, I started learning Spanish there. Okay, so okay. <laughs> yeah, but you speak German. Spanish like... So I was in this? No. Oh, Espanol. Si, sí, claro. <laughs> yeah, she like like you speak Spanish like way better than me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't afraid to move to other okay. country, and uh, yeah, I find it quite nice. Sometimes uh, it's a bit boring when you guys are not here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I in was, this case, I can I train more, go running, I, and then like put away all the thoughts. I was still supposed to be in the states. Like what? Well, it's it's May. It's Hopefully May eighth, <laughs> and I was supposed to be there till uh, June fourth. And then, like you know, by, like this year, the schedule was like, I'm just looking at my schedule. It was so nice. Like I would, I had school till June fourth. Then we fly directly to Russia nationals, back to Spain, Austria Gold Cup, back to Trifa training, Italy yeah. competition, back Trifa, then August full events. The fall 2020 was supposed to be such a. Mwah, <laughs> Such a piece of cake no, that's just I'm super advanced, happy advanced, that advanced, you are advanced. here now because otherwise it would be more difficult to, to stay during the quarantine. Well, yeah, but quarantine as well, like you stayed alone. It's it's tough, like, and then you know, I think like it's if if it's a quarantine, it's a, it's a great question. Like, how do you how do you like stay sane, sane <laughs> in, during the quarantine and like don't go crazy? What what have you been doing? Um, I started my YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, just training and sharing some uh, exercises okay. and trying so to wh find... So what, uh, what kind of YouTube channel did you start? Um, showing the life here in uh, Spain, right. in Tarifa. Is it Russian English? Russian, okay. for Russian mm -hmm. people. And also sharing my favorite exercises, okay. not water exercises, but just like... Okay. What we do? Yeah, great. Cause, cause it's funny. Like all people, I, I, I cannot train at home. 
like if I'm at home like and there's a soft or nothing like I can read books I've read like a bunch of books but like in terms of like doing like crunches so like doing the well, the push-ups like I just no the fact is that without I just can't, uh, I just can't force activity, myself I, I can like go to in deep depression so it's better to do something okay no, yeah I do at I, home, okay. I, I read books no like I play video games like and I no, eat no but even mm -hmm. like activity yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, something. I see, but like now it's at least now we can go for like since 1st of May we can go riding. Yeah. So, like, we finish this podcast and then I'm just gonna go change. It's gonna be eight o'clock, like, so what I think in an hour. Mm -hmm. There is no wind today, so amazing perfect. conditions, perfect for riding. Put my headphones on, little jog there and here, and then tomorrow I think about 6 30, wake up call again <laughs> early and then, early and then 7 a.m. I'm having breakfast. I don't know how you're going to the water hungry. No, yeah, there's just like for me to cook breakfast before it's uh, <laughs> too much time like it just it's 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 my precious sleep time because no. yeah no, i've read this book amazing it's called um why we sleep uh -huh. and now every time like i i do something i think like oh i need to sleep like i need to get those hours just in like because it's so important so yeah also, breakfast breakfast is on the first list yeah <laughs> first priority okay how do you in terms of equipment, you know, there's a, there's a bit of dra drama uh, right now on the Facebook with all this because um, I keep has posted Limitation. that some some manufacturers passed inspections, some of them not. Do you personally have any like perspective on it, or like in terms of equipment, what do you use, and then how do you choose it? Well, uh, with all this news, uh, it's only I guess less than one week past. Uh, from this decision that Mike's lab is not in the Olympics. Yeah. So honestly, I didn't have time to think about it <laughs> carefully mm -hmm. <laughs> and think what to do yeah. next. But yeah, now I'm using it. So should think about. You should, well, but okay, which equipment do you use right now, just generally? Uh, tarifa foil boards. Okay. <laughs> And um, kites of uh, fly surfer. Use fly surfer, okay. And the foils, some, which one? Some of them are uh, awesome. And foils, uh, Mike's lab, but bullet Mike's free. Lab. Bullet because, three. Uh, and thank you, Dennis, for sharing uh, you. Okay. <laughs> because I'm still on the waiting list, and um, actually, probably I should cancel this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. Like, like so many great, um, I've seen the list, like they post on IK website, there are so many companies that have a foil, in the foil now, mm -hmm. and it's just like, man, it's, it's going to be tough to choose which one is good, because if, if like, you need to, because I, I mainly yeah, do that like... Yeah, was, that was the best one, and now it's like, okay, Yeah, this is the thing, cause like, we need to try like, everything and... Uh, in, in my perspective, like, this, this is the thing, like, I, I'm an athlete, so like, I don't really care if the company makes it to the Olympics or not. Like generally, like for me, and I'm like I'm a, I'm personally here. I'm just for the Olympic Games. Like there is mm -hmm. nothing. Like I, I don't really care about the, like this the commercial events. Like they're, they're nice, they're good, but like ultimately the goal is the, the Olympic Games and yeah. then the, the like the IK fo the Formula Kite class. And then for me, it's an athlete. Like I have if, if they give me the list, I just choose. Yeah, we just need. And to I just and... and I just like I understand. Like there are so many options. There's, what, I think, 10 manufacturers. Oh, really? Yeah, the full manufacturer. Basically, we need to choose which one is actually good. And then, you know, I think this is going to be a tough one. And it's not so much, so much time to choose from. Exactly, because you need to um, feel yeah, every equipment and, and it takes time. At the sa yeah. And it, it's like always the new feeling. And uh, yeah, and the same for time, the beginner, it's super difficult. To choose. Yeah, and then also you need to so see. I will listen to you. <laughs> the, the performance generally in the on, on the competition, like and like, in different conditions. Yeah, like I, I can like the foil, but maybe like other, you go to the competition and another foil just goes better, and you need to look out for it and how it goes, and then I think just briefly comment out. I feel like now nah, I'm not gonna comment on it. It's like it's too political <laughs> stuff. I, I just no, like uh, with with Mike's lab, it was like okay, this is the best, so we're using this, and now yeah. it's a new challenge. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have, I love, I have a bullet five. I love it. It's it's good, uh, but uh, yeah, we, I guess we're gonna have to change it. And then in terms of like 
you know, I, we talked about you, with you this couple days ago about the gender equalities thing. <laughs> and I know you knew, you kind of knew a girl in, in the form of kite racing. But there has been a bunch of um, different discussions of how we should equalize the sport, maybe like in terms of the prize money, in terms of the, the fleet construction mm -hmm. and everything. And the thing is, it mostly goes towards the commercial events like the, the World Series or maybe the Hydrofoil Pro Tour. Because, you know, in, in, in the Formula Kite events, there is no prize money. There's just like the fleets are separated, boom, easy, done. But like with the World Series, it comes with terms like how much money do boys get? How much money do girls get, right? And then what's the split if, if there's like, before it was really tough, especially because we had like three girls and like 20 guys. Right now, let's say we're, we're gonna have like probably two to three to two ratio. So 30 guys, 20 girls, like in that amount of ratio, I feel. How do you think you would like, cause like I'm, I'm a part of the kite, kite um, IK rider representative. I really like would like to know like your perspective so of you how do you think should be fair split of or like let's say prize money and how the fleets should be split. Yeah, for example, in summer there were competitions where there were three fleets of uh, guys mm -hmm. and uh, only one of girls. Mm -hmm. And again, in this case, I understand that uh, the amount of girls is less and uh, probably the popularity is okay. also less. So the price money can be also less. But, but how much I less? What do you mean? Like one third, let's okay. say. So you, as I said, you kind of, yeah. what, what was my, what my perspective was, and I was pushing for like the last half, like last year is that to make a proportional split. Mm -hmm. So what basically means is that if we get $100,000 uh, prize money and we get 100, 100 boys, no, we get like 90 boys and 10 girls. So it should go 10,000 should go to the boys or to the girls and 90,000 to the boys. Yeah, I agree. If, if I, the, if, I like the yeah. idea with proportion, but yeah. I hope that uh, in one year, it, okay, it will not be equal amount, but probably it will be two fleets of boys and one fleet mm -hmm. of girls. So, yeah, and no, then the but, price but, money will yeah, be but, also but, but, a little. But what I would do is, is not by the fleets. Like, yeah. But uh, let's say like 50 boys and 50 probably girls. 40 girls will be soon. Or 50-50. Yeah, yeah, listen, if it's 50-50, yeah. the money is split in half. Yeah. And then do you think, how many riders should get paid? Top 10, top 3, top 5, top 12? I didn't compete a lot, but top 3, of course, probably top 5. What about top 10? Top 10? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling like, I kind of like the top 10 or top 8. I actually like it when, when top 10 get paid. It kind of establishes that um, mark that there's, okay, there's top 10 boys or top 10 girls, if you top 10, you get paid. And I kind of like this, 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 this feeling that you have to be top to get paid overall. And in terms of fleet, do you yeah, like... If we grow in uh, amount and we'll be like, I don't know, 100, 100. So yeah, yeah of course. Do you okay. like in, in the fleet? So this is the thing. Do you like when there is one big fleet, like 50 riders, everyone together, or you would like to see actually separation boys and girls? Like at least maybe like, not if like four fleets, mm -hmm. but at least like two fleets where the girls are separated from the boys. What, Probably what's your I would problem? prefer separation. For separation. To make the starting line uh, oh. easier and uh, yeah. Sound like easier. I'm voting for separation. And why, why don't want to like everyone together? Cause like it maybe can be more fun and. Oh, everyone together like mixed, but of course with yeah. the fleet separation, with the limit of people who is starting. Like 50 people, is it too much? Mm, 25 is okay. <laughs> what about 50? 50 depends on the conditions, but okay. yeah, a bit too much. What do, you, what do you think about the helmet and life jacket? You should use it. Both? Of course. While I, I, life like, jacket... Uh, I, I, use, I use helmet, like I just think like you, you probably, if, if you do foil racing, you, mm -hmm. have to be st you have to be really stupid not to use um, yeah, helmet, the helmet, the especially in the racing. Yeah. But like the life jacket, like I'm, I'm really, I, I was thinking like, why do I need it? Mm -hmm. And I, at my level, I don't think really why I need it. Like I know like you potentially can fall and break your ribs, but like, I guess you can do the same with the life jacket. And then 
I, I crash yeah, actually, a lot. When and you I train, okay, you can use it because uh, no, but like, then this is the thing. Like I, I, I when I crash, um, like I, I don't really have like not anymore. Like very rarely I have like a really like bad crash when mm -hmm. I just like like knock myself out. Like really rarely. Most of the time, like when I crash, it's like I can feel it. Like I know that I'm gonna crash, mm -hmm. and I can kind of do like the the soft crash. Like I, I can, I can, I, I almost like slide with the water, mm -hmm. and it's like. And if, if the thing is like if I hit the fish, it usually would go like kaboom, complete <laughs> face down. Like but then it's face, not not the body, because you just you go down when you, you like go with face down. Yeah, probably you're right. Life jackets uh, oh, and also. I think like life jacket can be option, like because yeah. it's it's not really protecting your life, but it's more like just like if you want to kind of feel maybe safer or like have less impact. Because yeah. the helmet is like it's protecting your life. And it's I like think a seat belt. Everyone can swim, so. Also. Oh yeah, I mean no. If, if you do kite surfing, you don't know how to swim. It's kind yeah. of bad. It's, it's so yeah, actually, it it can be a good idea competing without life jackets. Okay. I'm for for this. Is is blonde your natural natural color? color? Yes. Do you paint? So you, you don't like? Never. You don't paint it anything. Mm -mm. Just the sun here. Just the sun. Yeah. How do you how do you like the competition inside? Do you, do you, is there a competition inside? our team like we so we have right now we have two girls tricky tricky question yeah there's valeria and yeah. there's sofia and for example right now valeria is in russia you're in spain and like i feel like it's an advantage to you right now that you can train with us and valeria can't because she's stuck in russia is there a rivalry between you and valeria who is going to be better because only one girl can go to olympics of course, both of us want to be the best one. Yeah. And we're making the best. Because this is the thing, like, I asked this thing about the um, girls from UK, and they said, like, no, no, like, we'll chill, like, we're just friends. But I, I don't believe this. That's a, that's, that's a BS. Like, there's, <laughs> like, there's literally, like, six girls, and then only one of them is going to go to Olympic Games. Like, and, and, like, there has to be, like, competition, like, like a serious competition inside them. And I would be, I would be furious, like if I would train my ass off for like four years straight, and then I would be just like, nope, you're not going, like he's going. And like I would definitely remember like every single moment, like it was, what I just didn't do, didn't give my best. So. Yeah, but that's why it's better to train in the team, because yeah. we always have this motivation to be better. Yeah. So do you feel competition uh, with Valeria? Not yet. <laughs> why? Why not yet? Uh, I don't know, like, because, uh, yeah, still we are helping and we are just motivating each other. Okay. And, uh, and it's like, I don't know, uh, we will be competitors. <laughs> we will be competitors, but okay. not in the negative way. Okay. The competitors in positive. <laughs> okay. When do you think you're gonna overtake her, or when you're gonna get on her level? We'll see. No. What, what do you think? Like, when, when do? Because, because, like, you, you do you have a plan? Like, maybe like a thing. You're I like, expect. The, when do you expect? Yeah. In one year to be at the same level. Okay. So, let's say, Russian Nationals 2021. You, you basically you plan to compete with her for the position. Yes. Okay. What about the, this this fall? Um, depends uh, on uh, when the Russian competition will be held. No, uh, not in the Russian competition, just in general. Let's say November. November, also quite a lot of time till November, so. Yeah. And this, this thing, I think, like I, I think I told you a couple of times, is if you just, the thing is, you, you definitely, you're lacking the experience. So if you just turn on your head and like start thinking, like just thinking, like how do I do it better? How do I do it better? And this time, like we, we talked today about the taco jive. Like you, when you do the taco jive, like you have to think about like this is like I, I love this exp like this expression so much. My coach from freestyle mm -hmm. Alexander, and he was more like a mentor with me because we've been we've been with him like from probably like ten when I was ten from ten to like sixteen. So he was like a really mentor to me, mentor to me when he was just teaching life. And when we're doing freestyle, he would say like. Either you fuck the kite or a kite fucks you. That's that's it. That's easy, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so what I mean is, but when like you do the Chaco Jipe, like you have to think like, what's your kite doing? Like you have to control the kite, you have to control the board, you have to control every aspect. And like you have to be in control. And if yeah, you do the Yeah, there are a lot of details. Yeah, like you, you, <laughs> ju you just should be concentrated and like you shouldn't do like, like I just did the tack, like I don't know mm -hmm. what I did. Like you should be, you should know every single moment. And then when you do it wrong, you just should think, okay, like a checklist in your head, like kite was okay, not board tack. How you how how you curve curve the the board, like what's what's what went wrong, or what can go better, you know. Just always like self um, analyzing yourself, like the position and everything. And I think this is the thing one where the riders really excel. Mm -hmm. And what the team gives you is that if you train low, this is if if you train without thinking, you can just go home. There is no point for anyone to train, try to be someone. The thing is, if you think and the, the, be, the best. If you think, if yeah. you also discuss it uh, with the team, and yeah. uh, when you're discussing, you're like, oh, I I missed this point, or yeah, actually, yeah. I didn't and also, I think with the team, this is such a thing, team, because when you you can experiment and you see your results like immediately, like you say, okay, we're gonna go up with, I'm gonna change my stance a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you see yourself to others. You either going better than before or worse than before, and boom, easily. That's yeah, bad. but also I think it's it's the best way to train is to train in the team, but okay. also to have uh, completely like lonely sessions in order to think by yourself. Like, okay, now I got all this information and. Uh, to see and to think like clearly because okay. of, um, when I was here alone training mm -hmm. there were also guys from Poland and uh, from uh, Italy okay. and it was so cool like one day we were training together mm -hmm. and then the next day uh, you are just like making the session by yourself okay. text or jabs and uh, it's also very very useful to have okay. this uh, yeah I think that's the only thing uh, when you train alone like you you, you have you, you when you train a lot for a lot of time, yeah. then uh, yeah, you have like uh, super slowly progress. No, that's what the thing. Like when you train, but a lot, when you mix, yeah, when you mix, you said. But when you go alone, like you really have to be conscious of what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. if you just go out there and just like you free ride, like right, left, couple of tucks, you're basically wasting no, the no, session. No, no, you you always need to have uh, in mind uh, the plan of the training. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just like what I'm doing. Do you, I mean, I'm, I'm actually interested, like, when you go alone in the world, because I think, like, people who listen to us, not everyone has the privilege to train with a partner every day or have mm -hmm. a team. If they go alone, when you go alone, what do you do, like, mentally, physically to prepare yourself for the session, and how does the session go? Um, I'm making a plan, like, uh, what I'm going to do in minutes, okay. and... Uh, so, like, do you plan, like, by minutes or, like, by an hour? Mm, let's say... 20 30 minutes okay and can you tell me like an example what you would do in the session usually when i'm going uh, alone i'm not making a warming up <laughs> right. i i start with uh, with the text and jibes okay uh, for 30 minutes okay. then 20 minutes uh, some static just to uh, okay. make the rest and uh, then again uh, turns tax tax okay and like okay yeah nice and then you also like i guess uh, and also for the tax it's just like not okay how many tax i'm going to do this time it should be also stable and uh, then trying to remember how many tax were successful how many tax were wrong okay in order to analyze it do you use gps like do you supplement like with the watches yeah now they're broken oh yeah but it's like very very useful to use uh, gps because also, f if you go like for a long training, you usually can forget about uh, your nice tags. Okay, okay. Tags. But with all the graphics, you can see where the speed was good, where everything was like perfect, uh -huh. or you had some problems. Okay, and then, but then, okay. Do you, and also the angle, everything. Okay. Do you, do you like the morning sessions we've been having for last week? Yeah, it's... I, okay. I actually kind of like them. I think maybe like try to implement them like in, in, in the summer training mm -hmm. where we can do like an hour morning session like at 7, 8 a.m. Just, just like to wake up and then come back and breakfast and then have like the normal session as we usually do in the afternoon. 
like yeah. two, two, three hours? The thing is just like uh, it started so fast, so <laughs> I didn't change the um, uh, time yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, you know what? I've and noticed after this training dying, but in um, in December, mm -hmm. you've been using carbon bars. Oh no, you've been using normal bars, and now I came here and you're using carbon bars. Wow. How do you like the transition? I like it a lot. Okay. Because... <laughs> My name is Sylvia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, like, with the carbon uh, bar. Yes. Um, so, sometimes when I was doing tag, mm -hmm. I was trying to keep myself on the boat or on the kites, like, uh, taking this bar. Uh, like pull-up not, not bar. The, yeah pull the bar but with the carbon it's so light so you're like okay i need to stand on the board and uh, <laughs> i don't need to pull nothing <laughs> so and yeah like making uh, uh, like pulling the kite mm -hmm. given the direction is also a bit easier for me and uh, yeah i like it you like it a lot yeah i love carbon bars too so nice so light yeah Amazing. Oh, by the way, you know what's funny, guys? It's 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 not so yesterday or the day before yesterday, we went on the session in the morning, like 7 a.m. And we left our kite bags and cover for the falls and boards on the beach, like with the sand and the flip flops. We actually, the wind actually died and we ended up swimming for like an hour and a half back to the shore. <laughs> and when, when we came back, yeah, and then when we came back to the place where we had the kites or the, the bags, they were stolen. Yeah, everything. hopefully I didn't left. Uh, I didn't leave the GoPro there. Yeah, everything except the the My, flip flops. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's that's wow. Spain. Why would anyone take like it's such specific branded covers? And why I'm, they didn't like my flip flops? Yeah, and <laughs> I'm actually and actually I was uh, I was looking for to buy new covers. Do they expensive? Hundred euros a set. No one buys it for me. I have to buy it myself. Mm -hmm. that, and also, this is a funny thing. I was um, I usually do like couple couple freestyle session a year, yeah. and I noticed that I actually my my level of freestyle. I thought I was good. I actually really bad. <laughs> like the other day, like it was thirty knots, I was good. Yesterday it was like thirty five knots, really gusty. I was shit. Like I couldn't do I couldn't do anything, and I felt like that was so over my level that I, I should kite more than five times a year than 20, but this year it's <laughs> two times so but far already. But still you're jumping quite uh, high. Huh? But still you're jumping quite high, so. No, yeah, but like, soon condition change a little bit. From like, the beach, I like it. <laughs> no, it's, it was the first day. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the, the yesterday. Uh, it was, okay, it was, yeah, it was, was bad. Sleeping. Like I, I quit, I just like, I crashed a <laughs> couple times, like, you know, like um, I'm done. Uh -huh. Like I, I want to have the, the life jacket now. <laughs> Okay. Well, so here, I want to learn how yeah, to I jump. think um, I think it's great. This this episode was amazing. Actually, we you we got we introduced you to the world, and I actually I hope to to repeat this 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 experience maybe like in a year. Yeah, we'll with the, see with the, the with the with the with the Russian title, <laughs> number one, number one kite faller in Russia, 2021. <laughs> Speaking from my heart. <laughs> yeah, you know, with, with all the love from my heart. But anyway, you know, do you want to drop any links? Like, you said you have a YouTube channel for, for the Russian guys. You can, like, say something in of Russian. Of course, all the links will be down. <laughs> no, okay, just just what's, what's your Instagram? Uh, Sofia Kotler. Yeah, basically then... Um, ребят, можешь подписаться на ее YouTube канал, который будет на в описании, да? Да. Um, yeah, what else? That was the, the, the plaque for the YouTube channel in Russian. But basically... This coronavirus really fucked up the schedule. I was really hoping to get um, like every second Wednesday. And this is the coronavirus, two weeks, nuts. But let's see. I hope we're gonna get back on the schedule. I have no idea how, uh -huh. because we don't actually have uh, any guests. So if anyone, but if, 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 you if, can if, use Zoom. Yeah, just, just, you know, just personally, if any guys from Trifa, yeah. the kite, the, the freestyle foilers, you wanna just come and talk. Let's let's hang out, talk some fun, mm -hmm. some kite surfing stuff. And it's been a pleasure, like guys as well. My name is Dennis. You can follow me on Instagram. Thank you for Thank watching you, the kite cast. And you know what I think, Sophia? We actually 
Should we upload it to Spotify? Yeah, I guess it's already there. No, 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 the, the KiteCast. Because ah. it's never been on, it's usually on Facebook and YouTube and that's it. No, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's going to be on Spotify, maybe not. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, listening or consuming our KiteCast. And I, <laughs> I see you next time when I see you guys. Peace. Thank you. Oi, why, why, why did I do this? Okay, bye. <laughs>